Greetings, everybody, and surprise, sort of. <laughs> um, the surprise is I'm sneaking in another video this week. I've only been doing one every week, but this is a big week. Samhain is coming. We only have a few more days left until Samhain. And if you are like me, you are really busy doing a lot of things. And I'm doing something today I've never done before, and I wanted to share with you um, what it's about. And um, I was going to just take you along and let you see um, the project that I'm working on today. It's another project, but um, my husband and I are going to have, um, we're going to hold a dark dinner. <laughs> A dark dinner, and this is just a special dinner for, for my husband and myself. Nobody else is coming. Nobody else of this realm is coming. Um, I'm sure you're mostly all familiar with what is called a dumb supper. A dumb supper is typically held at this time of the year um, um, to communicate with the ancestors, communicate with the dead. And there's a lot of different ways of doing it. It's very. It's been done for hundreds of years in different ways. It's I've attended some of them and they're usually very lovely, but um, they're always, the thing that is common, that's in common, they all have in common, no matter what they are, is a, by the name Dumb Supper, it means they are held in silence. They're held in silence and complete silence, that's the important part, where you share a meal and then the idea is you are concentrating and communicating attempting to communicate, getting messages, whatever, to or from your deceased loved ones, which is very lovely. And there's always certain things that they have in common. There's usually pictures of the deceased involved. And sometimes the foods are um, foods that the deceased liked and those kind of things. But um, they are, like I said, they are dumb. They're held in silence. Well, my husband and I decided to do something a little different this year for one of the things, one of our celebrations we're going to have. We decided to have a, a dark dinner. Now, some of you who have been watching me a while know that in 2019, I held, my husband and I held a big party, a dinner party, which was a black dinner party where everybody dressed in black and we ate black foods and we did, we welcomed the darkness. We held it at Maybon. Well, this is not the same as that. This is something different. This is another thing that's different. <laughs> we're always doing something different. We love to shake it up around here. But this is his dinner. We're going to have a dinner. It's going to be really lovely. We're going to put out, you know, put a pretty, make a pretty table. And, and, but, and we're going to do it in the dark. We're going to pretty much do it in the dark. We're going to turn on all the lights, first of all, except for candles. We're going to have candlelight. And then we are going to um, use dishes, some, eat some of the favorite foods. Um, that we're having and of uh, our ancestors, some of our ancestors, and we're going to talk about them. We're going to talk. We're going to relate stories, remembering times and remembering what we loved about these people and, and how we carried them through our lives today because my husband and I have a very good relationship with our deceased loved ones that we talk about them all the time. We don't celebrate their death. We don't celebrate their heavenly birthdays. As a matter of fact, I'm not even sure. We were thinking, talking about the other day. We weren't even sure. Not only we weren't sure the day, the date that our loved ones died, we weren't actually sure of even sometimes the year they died <laughs> because we don't celebrate that. To us, we celebrate their life. We talk about them all the time. We would say all the time, oh, what would my father say? What would your mother say? Oh, do you remember when, when Graham did this? Do you remember when, you know, that's how we talk. We just include them in our life all the time. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. But right now, I want to get into this um project because it's a little timely. It's a little timely. And while I'm showing you what I'm doing, I'm going to be talking to you a little bit more about why we, why, why we chose this particular dish to include in our um, dinner because it's nothing that either of us had growing up. We've never had this before, but we'll tell you why we're having it. So just stay tuned. I'm going to move my camera and try to get this in focus and then I'll show you what I'm doing now and I'll talk to you then. Okay, what I have, what I have here under my towel is some little balls of dough <laughs> um, that have been, they've been resting. These are actually, um, it's a very shaggy, it was a very shaggy dough. It was a, kind of like a um, overnight, overnight bread that, um, Let me get some flour in my hands. This is very messy. <laughs> it's a, 
it's an overnight bread that um, I mixed up. All I did was mix it up. It's like a, like a, um, I think they're called fagas, which is a kind of flatbread um, that's served in Provence, I believe. But anyway, um, it just, it just is made up of uh, kind of a wet dough. It's like a, I really like my pizza dough. It has, it's just like a bread dough, but it has with flour, yeast, salt, and water, but it has the addition of a little bit of sugar and a little bit of um, oil, olive oil. So it just, it's not going to really rise a lot. It's going to rise a little bit. Like a pizza dough sometimes will rise a little bit. So all I'm supposed to do here is I'm supposed to make shapes and I'm going to make some kind of a face on the shape. And I can kind of make it as big as I want because we want it kind of thin. But we want to make holes. We want to make holes because we want to have an eye. They're supposed to look like little ghosts. Little eyes. Let's see if I can do that. There, we can tear little holes. And because this dough, um, Fogasa usually has, um, I think I could do it better on my sheet. I have a piece of parchment um, lined pan here that I can sort of put here. Then I can kind of do it on the sheet and then we'll see. It's very sticky dough, so I'm going to try to do it on my parchment paper. I'm going to bake them on these on these pans with some parchment paper. But I want to make the I want to make the um, dough shaped. I want to try to make it make the eyes. I want to make faces like like faces. So I'm going to pull it apart like that. So I can have eyes, eyes and a mouth. I think ghosts will have eyes and a mouth. So, and then I'm going to keep them flat and different shapes. They can be any shapes, but I kind of want them flat. I don't know if you can see that. I have eyes and I'm going to put a mouth and try to stretch that. I'll my fingers all the time. I've never done this before, so this might be. <laughs> I don't know if it's right or not. We're gonna find out. But I want the holes to stay in the bread, because that is the one thing that makes this is a certain kind of flatbread where it does make holes. So, and the reason that we can do this is because we let it rest, and that made the um it won't it won't spring back so easily. When I move it, it'll kind of stay. Okay, so there we go. We have, I don't know if you can see that. It's, it's going to be upside down, but here we have a mouth and we have two eyes. Okay. So I'm just going to make a few of these on the camera so you can see. But what I wanted to say was, there's no rhyme or reason to the shape, by the way. It's just, I mean, to the size. It's just whatever it makes. So you just, the idea is you're just going to make it in. And the flour is just to keep it from sticking to me, like I'm kind of sticking. Anyway, why? This is what I want to talk to you about. Why am I having this? Well, we're, we made a menu for our dinner um, based this year. What we decided to have this year, we picked things that our, some of our deceased family members really liked. And it made us, reminded us of the family. I have a little um, rolling pin here that can help make that. Because these aren't going to rise too much. They're only going to rise a little bit. Just like a pizza dough doesn't really rise a whole lot. It shouldn't. Um, so we're having some basic foods that my family ate all the time and my husband's family. And one of the things that we have, both of us were from Pennsylvania, so we're having ham. Ham loaf is actually what we're having. And some potatoes, some special cheesy potatoes, and um, some other things, some favorite desserts, etc. And then... Um, we decided to have hors d'oeuvres because we really like to have hors d'oeuvres. And um, when we were thinking about what we could have, we we're thinking of a, of a bread or something. And I came across this idea for sardines. Like, oh, sardines. I have never eaten sardines. And it's funny. And I was talking to my husband about it. And he goes, he's never eaten sardines either. And we were laughing about it because our parents all ate sardines. There was always a can of sardines in the freezer 
I mean, in the pantry. And we don't know who ate it or when they ate it, but it was always, it disappeared and then more sardines would show up. So I imagine they were eating the sardines. And they ate them on crackers, on saltine crackers, everybody. And we just thought, what in the world does that taste like? We don't know. So we were, we were, we thought, oh, let's give this a try. And I looked up some salt, because we do eat fish and we do eat anchovies. We like that. And we thought, we probably would like them. I mean, I don't know why we wouldn't. It just seems sort of funny from our childhood <laughs> that we were going to have sardines. Why would we be eating sardines? So I found a recipe for a sardine dip. Sardine dip, a dip I made out of sardine, and we like we like dip. So we thought, well, what could we eat? We could we eat? Well, we eat a lot of, you know, um, crudités here. Our family does, my children and us. But my husband, my parents, my parents didn't really get into that. I mean, they had a relish tray, which was like carrots and celery, but we didn't really eat like hors d'oeuvres or things like that. So we didn't think that was so appropriate. But then we thought, well, we could have sardine dip. We could eat the dip. And what would we dip in it? And I looked, I looked up on the internet and I found these really fun flatbreads that they're supposed to look like a ghost. When we're there and done, I thought, and they're gonna make like a, well, like a flatbread. So they're gonna be real good to, you can put them in a dip or you can put them in a, um, now this is gonna be a long skinny, long skinny ghost. I can see that right away. So we're gonna try it. But the first time we thought this is the least we could do we could owe our parents that we we're going to try the sardines. But we were so disgusted as children, we thought that was just disgusting. But certainly not children anymore, so we're going to give it a try. So I'm just going to put these out here. I put them on the, on the, uh, I think I'll put the eyes. This one will be right side up if you can see this one. I think they're going to be fun. The fun thing about this is there's no, you know, ghost faces are so random, aren't they? There's no rhyme or reason to them. There's just some holes. We see some eyes and we usually see some mouth. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. So I'm going to just continue to make these and I'm going to let these rise a while. They have to rise for about um, 20 minutes. Just cover it, let it rise, and then I'm going to bake them. And then when they come out of the oven, brush them with a little melted butter. And I will show you what they look like. So you get the idea. I'm going to just keep making these. So I don't really have too much more to say about that. But I can tell you a little bit more about the black dinner and what we're going to do it. Because you might want to do it. I think it's, I think it's a really good alternative to a dumb supper. I think it's, I think it's important that we maintain a relationship with our dead, with our ancestors. You know, we're all saddened by the loss of people, our loved ones all the time. It doesn't just have to be relatives, it can be friends. And I'm sorry to say that I include quite a few friends among my deceased loved ones and it seems I get more and more every year. But, um, like I said, we pick some foods. We're, we're, first of all, this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to tell you how we're going to do it. So you, if you, you do it your way, but this is what we're going to do. We're going to have a, um, we're going, to, we're going to dress up the table really lovely. We're going to have the foods on the table um, all together. First of all, it's just like I said, my husband and I are the only ones attending <laughs> of the living, but we're going to have... Um, We'll set an extra place, like they usually do at a dump supper. And we'll set an extra place um, at the table for anybody who happens to come in, for anybody of the disease who happens to show up. This is kind of fun, <laughs> trying to decide what kind of shapes to use. I'm very excited my fogas, my ghost fogas, are all out of the oven and I've brushed them with butter and they're on racks which I'm cooling and they're adorable. I'll show you a few. I hope you, they show up on camera. But here's a few. Woo! Is that cute? They're very cute. They're flatbreads. It's like I said, they're flatbreads. They're a little crisp on the outside. There we go. But they're a little bit soft. I can feel them a little bit 
inside. <laughs> ben thinks he wants one. You don't get one, Ben. Come inside. And some, but see, they can make any kind of shape. They really don't change shape too much from when you form them. There we go. And Joe Bang baked them. Anyway, I got out of that batch um, 13, 13 full glass. And I'm going to be serving them with the sardine dip. So that's our that's our interpretation of um, sardines on saltine crackers, which I think probably would be very lovely. I'm not trying to judge. I think they must be lovely since both of our parents ate that and they were not connected in any way at that time. So they, oh, look at this one. This is really funny. I want to show you this one. Look how funny this one is. Wah, wah. <laughs> They're really cute. I can't wait. So I'll get a good picture of these. And I think this is going to be in my book project. So you'll see that if you get my book when I'm done. Anyway, um, I just want to say one more thing. This is, I want this to be a short video because I have a lot of things to do. We usually do a lot of things at Salmon. I've already, um, I think, showed you preparations that I made for our, the, um, the bonfire that we're having also for Salmon this year, which is an event. It's a small, intimate event just with some close friends. But it is going to be out in our back patio, out in the back, no, the back deck around the, the pool. Um, in a, we're going to have a bonfire. We're going to tell some ghost stories and and sing some songs and do some fun things like that. But um, the deal is, this is what I want to say. This is the one important thing I want to say. I don't expect anyone here to make these, these funny little, little goss. <laughs> they're so funny. Um... Or, the, or eat sardines or any of those things or have a bonfire and tell ghost stories or whatever. I don't expect that. I don't expect you to have a black dinner. I don't expect you to have a witch's tea. If you've watched me for any time, you know that we're very active all the year, celebrating the Wheel of the Year, but particularly active at Samhain, which I think all of us as witches are. But what I want to say, the one difference that I make at Samhain, we make in our, at Samhain at our time of the year is... A lot of people approach Samhain as a time to communicate with their ancestors or their deceased loved ones, which we do too. Um, because the veil is sin, I believe that very wholeheartedly. And we always do a lot of activities which include that. But we do not, my husband and I do not approach that as a, from a place of sorrow. Yes, we're sad. We're sad that we can't sit and talk like with our deceased loved ones like we used to. We're, we're sad that they're not maybe a part of our life in the physical sense like they used to be. But I have mentioned that they are very much a part of our life, okay, and um, our everyday life. So we don't have a place of sorrow concerning our loved ones so much as we have a place of joy and how they about how they enriched our lives. And I want you to think about that for a few minutes and think about all of us who extra a lot of extra things at Salon because... Nobody loves Samhain more than a witch. Let's be honest. Like, who who loves Samhain more than a witch? Nobody. It's so cool to be a witch, right? It's cool. At Samhain, we're the cool kids. We're the, at the cool lunch table, right? Everybody wants to be us. So we really embrace it and love it. But I want to say something. Having these little tiny celebrations, however small, or like this is really just dinner. I mean, it's just, let's face it, our dark dinner is just going to be dinner. It's just things we eat. Yes, it's our favorite foods. And yes, we're having sardine dip for the first time and pagas for the first time. But we're having ham loaf, which we eat a lot. We're having scallop, um, go gratin potatoes, which we eat a lot. Green beans, who doesn't eat that? We're gonna have a special dessert. We're gonna have, okay, so that's that's interesting. We don't normally eat dessert, <laughs> at least during the week or just on an, an average day. We don't usually eat dessert. But by doing that, these kind of things at this time of the year, we are approaching the memories of our loved ones and the distance that we have experienced from our loved ones because they are deceased in a joyful way. We are remembering all of the wonderful memories. We tell stories, we laugh, we talk about, we have the funniest expressions. Our parents had some, <laughs> you know, let's face it, you know, your parents, you're separated from your parents by generations, no matter how close in age. My parents are a little closer to my age and my husband's parents are to him. My husband had, his parents had him when, a, when they were at a pretty advanced age. His mother was the child of a Victorian woman, literally in a Victorian woman. You know, my, my father wasn't that terribly removed from my age, but of course he was a World War II veteran. But 
his grandfather served in the Civil War. So there was a distance in his family in that direction. Okay, so um, it can be a very sad time. But this is like parties that we hold because we love our relatives. It's not parties we hold because we're sad they're gone. It's parties that we hold because they are here with us, especially at this time of the year. Especially at this time of the year. So try to think of activities that you could do. Just make your mother's famous lasagna your, or make, you know, maybe you don't cook or you're, you know, like my father ate a lot of peanut butter. Get, make yourself a peanut butter sandwich and have a good time thinking about you. <laughs> thinking about what that peanut butter meant to your father or whatever. This is, this is what we do at this time of the year that is so special and can help us. It can help us soothe the hurt that is left when these people leave us. You know, I understand it's a really sad time. I am, I miss these people so much. I miss a lot of my friends are past. My husband just learned of the dis, his the the man who was best one and his friend who was best best man at our wedding has just passed. And everybody that was involved, all of you know, my my maid of honor has passed. Her husband has passed. These people were very young and and died very young. You know, some of them died really young, and others, even at our age, we consider that to be pretty young. We, we consider we have at least 30 years, you know, to live, at least we want to. And it's very sad when you start losing people. But if you can incorporate them into your daily lives and talk about them and and and, and make them a part of your, your daily life, make them a part of your life, it is not so sad. It helps you. The lessons they had to teach us are not being forgotten. We are now incorporating the lessons for that we learned from them when they were alive that maybe we didn't pay attention to when they were alive. We all have that experience. You know, oh, my father was trying to teach me this when he said what's, whatever he said, right? But now I can look at that because he's gone and I can say, oh, that's what he meant. Oh, that's what he was trying to say. That is really cool. You know, thank you for that. This is what we're doing. So anyway, however you celebrate the season, however you celebrate Samhain, I wish you the most glorious blessings upon you. I do. I thank you so much for watching my channel and being a part of my and my um, walking the wheel of the year. Thank you so much. I'm Rebecca, and I wish you many, many, many blessings.